This this mango. Oh, so it's about 5 a.m. I've been up since about two. So three hours. Just trying to get some sleep, but I've been bitten by something. I don't know what it is. But it it's like it bites and then it just itches all over the arms over my stomach. I just feel so uncomfortable. Um and I'm hot because I don't have an AC room and I'm a bit of a city boy. You know, I need AC to sleep. I can't sleep under the fans. Well, I can if it's a powerful fan, but these fans, they're just not strong enough. So I'm just feeling really warm. And the only thing I can think to do is go out for a bike ride, not even a bicycle ride, because I'm sounds like such a whinger today, but I'm just telling you how it is. Because of my foot, the cycling's really hard. So I've still got the motorbikes and, I, and it'll cool me down. So I'm just gonna go for a motorbike ride somewhere and see what's going on. That it, just have something to do really, just to distract myself from the discomfort. And these are first world problems. It's not an emergency, but it's just, you know, no sleep, plus the biting, plus the heat, plus the foot. <laughs> kind of adds up a bit. So I'm gonna go and distract myself on a motorbike. <laughs> what else to do? I don't know what else to do. So I've come out just for a drive and it's packed. And the reason why it's packed is this is where they sell all the fruit. This is the main street that you've seen me hanging out in. And the, the local people come here every day between 4 a.m. and 6 a.m. and they sell the fruit here. That's why there's no fucking fruit shops. Look. Bananas, greens, I don't know if it's organic. Look. Big baskets on people's heads. A dog. I'm not the only one who can't sleep. Look, all the garlic is there. The coconuts. Jackfruit. Look at the size of that jackfruit. even someone on a bicycle this is like this is like 5 a.m and it's heaving god i feel so at home <laughs> i wonder if they're all itchy as well morning. yes good morning good morning sir look at this pile of bikes <laughs> if i delivered coconuts i would want a coconut delivery vehicle like that check out the, the wheels <laughs> I love it in Asia. I was totally expecting to be going around on my own in desolate streets. And there's more people here at this time in the morning than there is in the day. I've checked the prices and the watermelons are about 80 pence and the pineapples are 30 pence. There's a little dog kissing my leg. Hello. <laughs> What are they? Hello. Good Hello. Good morning. Yeah, banana. What are they? Uh, coconut small. Small Yellow coconut. Banana. And this small banana. Yes. Small so you sell all the small fruits then? <laughs> the small coconuts small, and the small, small, yeah. small, small. Mr. Big. I'm big. <laughs> I know. I decided to leave the book. Itchy as fuck. I'm so itchy. And it just feels better to be moved. So I'm going back down to uh, the south. The toe's too far to go north, it's really steep. So I'm going to be going downhill to a wood, which I'm really excited about. Kuta, I'm excited about the downhill part. And then um, I'm actually going to see if I can get a, an earlier flight back to Chiang Mai. I think I've done what I've come here to do. I've seen my friends. I've checked it out. I definitely like it. I'm not sure about these bed bugs and the fruit. But um, it's a place to come back. But for now, I think I'm done. I want to get back to Chiang Mai. Get back to Wang Mai. Smashing <laughs> some fruit, man. The Garmin just takes you on crazy roads. I've been down alleyways, up and down hills. It's supposed to be downhill all the way. But the Garmin just like, you're going this way. It's kind of cool, though. It's quite adventurous. 
to do it like that. Just follow the Garmin. This Garmin is great. It's like I want to get to the airport see if I can get a flight. And it's going, fuck you, I'm not going anywhere. It keeps taking me to these really interesting places. Look. Hello. Look, it's amazing here. Garmin. How does it even notice what it is? Look. In the middle of a beautiful. Hello. Good morning. It's a beautiful, beautiful field. Look. <laughs> this is epic. I'm so happy. Thank you, Garmin. So they build these lampposts or whatever the hell. They're not really lampposts. But... So I'm at the airport and uh, it's too expensive to fly right now. I, I could go, but I mean it's 2 million Indonesian rupiah to change my flight. And I thought, you know what? I'm flying back to the mountains and the bridge in the mountains. So why don't I go to the beach? So I think I'll just spend the next, you know, the, the, before I fly back home, I think I'll spend the time, the time on the, by the sea. That's what I'm feeling I want the most. And one of my friends is actually flying into Bali today, like now. <laughs> so I'm going to wait for his flight and, uh, yeah, hang out for a bit. But I think I, I, I wanted to go back because I really want to... I want to get back to Chiang Mai now and get on with my project. I feel like I, the holiday's been great, but it didn't need to be a week. I just needed like five days really just to check this place out, see my friends, have a boogie and bail. Um, but I really am on a mission in Chiang Mai. I feel so supported there. I've worked really hard to make my life there like solid so that I can um, cycle up the mountain, cycle around, get my fruit, have high carb restaurants near me and, and make this journey possible. And this traveling malarkey, this is what I was doing for years. I was traveling around everywhere. And it was impossible to stay raw and get healthy for me, just because I get, you know, so uh, involved in the energies of where I go. You know, I'm not a disciplined person. It's like, wherever I go, I'm just raw. I tend to kind of like more, with food at least, more morph into what other people are doing. And that's why I go to a bud. I'm in raw gourmetville, I go raw gourmet. So I'm going back to Chiang Mai, knowing that that's the right place for me to be right now, knowing I've got great friends there too. Um, I've got great places to live and, and, and an awesome, awesome supply of fruits made me really value it. But anyway, I'm gonna hang out on the beach just to get some sunshine and get some, huh, I've already got a lot of sunshine. Swim in the sea, maybe, maybe go up north a little bit on the coast, find a nice beach, go for a swim. <laughs> see my pal, see what he's up to, and then I go back to Chiang Mai, and that's the end of my trip. But I'm going back there knowing that um, high carb vegan is the way. And I live in Chiang Mai for a reason, and this has made me value that reason a lot more. You want taxi? Taxi? Hey! <laughs> <laughs> I just going, man. So I'm in a supermarket in uh, Kuta, and it's surprising that there's a lot more variety than the markets but the prices i don't think they're that great like these are 50 pence a kilo 50 pence a kilo i mean it's not bad compared to the uk but it's more expensive than uh i think than than chiang mai um but they've got some good stuff they've got the melons 790 rupee so seven thousand to three three pound four five pounds a kilo that's that's not cheap i think the best value what are these mong mongo gedong some mongo gedong <laughs> must be mango they're both taste they, they smell really good i'm going to get some of those they're, they're, they're not cheap you know money's not the only thing is it so five thousand nine hundred uh, 50,000 per 100 grams a kilo divided by 18, one, two, three, four pound a kilo. I mean, that's, that's a lot. 200 baht a kilo versus in Chiang Mai, 
20 to 40 baht a kilo. I've got a converter bar now, that's the only price I know the price of fruit. But I'm going to get some of these because these look smashing. So just bought my breakfast for tomorrow, I bought all these mangoes. Yeah. Mango. Let's see how much they come to. <laughs> Uh, apparently they are from the island of Bali, so I, if I was here longer I'd track down the farm. Very good mangoes. This guy's very good as well. Thank you. You look so happy. Why are you so happy? He looks very happy. Happy, <laughs> happy. Yeah. You don't, you don't need a reason. Oh my God. One for free. <laughs> yeah, twenty twenty-five dollars. Yes. Wait, are they, these are, he says this from Bali. Ah, uh, from Java. Java, not from Bali. Yeah. From Bali. See, yeah, this one. What? Why? They just don't grow here. Huh? Why not this one on Bali? Why this one Java? No, no I don't know. Because him have that is why. Huh? Yeah, because it's so good, and I want to find the farm. Yes, good. But the barley one is barley? not so good, really. No. You know? And this one's on Java. Yeah. Yes, Java. Okay, thank like you very this. much. You like strong I like this one. Oh, yeah, sweet. sweet. Very good. Okay, thank you very much for the information. Cheers. There you have it, folks. If you want mangoes, you got to spend twenty-five dollars to get good ones. It's a joke. It's, it's not a joke, it's actually um, just how it is. Because the same climate, it just, they just don't bother growing them here. You know what, if you've got land here... Oh fuck it, I'll just live in Chiang Mai. So I'm back in Kuta, in my hotel with the swimming pool, and I love it here. And I went to the supermarket, and I bought these mangoes. Now anybody who knows anything about mangoes, you know that's a good mango. You know that's a good mango. I would say, this is on par with the best mangoes I've had in Chiang Mai, in the peak of the season. It's almost like a creamy orange mixed with apricot. It's so good. I'm sure if you lived out here for quite some time, you could find good fruit because it's the tropics. It's just that they're not harvesting it. It's not in big demand. All the restaurants want papaya, watermelon, bananas, just because that's what they put in the fruit salad. But I'm sure you can hunt down farms, get some stuff going, and find some proper fruit, but this this mango, 